Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4, The Thrones of Ascension, Byzantine Pythium. Let's talk, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who have been providing me with strategy advice and have generally been supportive on the forums, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate that. And by the forums, of course, I do not mean the forums. I mean my comment section <laughs> in the videos. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the real Byzantine Empire. I'm currently reading a book about it, as we've discussed, the Warren Treadgold book. I've read books about it in the past, and I will probably read books about it in the future, despite the fact that, spoilers, they lose. They're, they're, despite a few good emperors, the Byzantine Empire is generally a story of 1,000 years of decline. But you know what? They held on for a thousand years, and I read the books, and I like them because it's interesting. So I want to explain to you that just because something is not a victory doesn't mean it isn't interesting. I would much rather have a hard-fought and honorable defeat with epic scenes of bravery than a victory that is easy and just stomping over the enemy. And I hope there's at least some of you out there who agree with me on this. My goal for these LPs, as I've said many times before, is not to act as some sort of master class for how to play Dominions. I am not an expert at the game, nor do I think will I ever be. Now, there are people on the forums who say, you know what, the AI is so stupid in this game, I could beat 10 AIs on impossible with both hands tied behind my back, and, you know, I don't know these people. They, they could be telling the truth, for all I know, but I, I think more likely it's a situation where perhaps they're playing an overpowered nation, or they're exploiting something, and that's fine, you know? But what I one of the things I think is great about Dominions is... Even if you do have experience, and even if you do know what you're doing, and even if you do know how to play the game and know what the spells do, and you could still lose. And I think, I think rather than hurt the game, I think that makes it better. I think if I were out there right now watching these LPs, I would say, holy crap, this guy's been playing this game in public already now for four full LPs, not to mention all the private experience he has, and he's getting beat right now. And there's just so much variety and so much depth that that happens. And as a game player, I think that's awesome. You know, I want a game that is difficult. I don't want to roam to Total War where my first campaign as Pontus, I basically just stomped over everyone. You know, it's not... So, anyway, the point of all this is I hope that those of you who are watching me, who have been watching me for a long time, are doing it because you enjoy my method. You enjoy these LPs. You enjoy the fact that I create a story, kind of a shared world for all of us to participate in. And it's not necessary that I win all the time. And I'm not saying that I won't. I mean, who knows? I could pull back here and we could win this campaign. I think there's about a 97.3 chance that I'll lose, but stuff happens. But the point is, that's not what I have to offer as an LP or I am offering my ability to create a story out of this and to entertain, hopefully, and provide humor and insight. And if you're into that, awesome. And I hope you stick around. And if you're not, I'm very sorry. Hopefully, you know, check out my nation summaries and mod reviews and check out my Orcs Must Die 2 with Tokshin and maybe just hold on and wait until the next LP when things maybe will be a little different and we'll have a nation that will right outside of the gates start stomping on the enemies and be more the kind of thing that you want to watch okay so let's see what else any other announcements well things are happening in uh in life this week and this weekend so my update schedule will be a little unusual i might skip a few days um i i won't be available this weekend at all except till maybe sunday evening so uh yeah i know Cry, cry, wine, wine. Marcus has a life. But uh, just want to let you know, in case some of you are wondering, like, oh my gosh, he didn't update today. Well, that's the reason why. 
and after Sunday I should be back onto normal schedule. And all right, well, I've I've done some talking here, so yeah, let's let's end the turn. Just oh, by the way, just in case things progress right now to the point where Ashdod is at my gates and the big battle is coming, I'm going to end the episode because I'm going to need a lot of time to prepare for that one, as you all probably know. We found a new death site, appropriately in Deadlands. We summoned an ice drake. We did find a new magic site in the Promised Land, but apparently it is no longer promised to us because Ashdod has it. Which is weird because they attacked us in Oak Halls. But hey, whatever. Jatros did not find an air site. Okay, Napernia, Marignon, are you going to give me some good news? No. You aren't. Not at all. Sog, why are you fighting by yourself? You were very stupid, Sog. Rivia. Hopefully they will send more than just one single Hydromancer. Oh, good. We have a number of heavy cavalry. And again, you see that they're attacking Scalaria, but they're not attacking Ermor. Ermor seems to be, again, maintaining an uneasy peace with everybody, and I get it. I mean, I know how Ermor works. I know that they're, they're massing these giant armies of undead. I see the graph scores, but it's chaffy undead, and it doesn't appear like Ermor really wants to, to beat anybody up. And another thing worth mentioning is the Dominion graph, as their Dominion is very terrible, and it's their Dominion that kills people. So... I don't know if, what's the deal there, um, but I think that's a good sign. Doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be able to stop Ermor, but it definitely makes the situation a bit more complicated than you would think. And I, I have no idea what's going on here. All of a sudden, Marignan was coming from the right, and Scalaria was coming from the left when they started in opposite directions, and that was kind of odd, but it looks like Marignan won, so fantastic. We have, okay, so I think I might have already showed you these ladies, but these are the undead, ethereal version of my battle vestals, and they are in every way superior to them, including having a magical weapon. So if it were to be a, I want to say mono e mono, but since that means man, I, I don't know what the fee mono versus fee mono but anyways, they would they would kick the crap out of my Vestals pretty handily. And that's a shame, because you know what? Ermor and Scalaria don't need any more advantages than they already have. But uh, what are you going to do? And yeah, sorry, Marignan, that Paladin... Oh, we made it out. Good. Good, the Paladin survived. All right, Ashdod versus me, I guess, Pythium, in Oak Halls. And they are, they are going south, they're heading toward my capital, that's interesting, but they're attacking with pretty much nothing. Not that we're defending with anything, but this is a good sign. This means that next turn we might be able to do a counterattack that actually beats them. And it looks like they're... this must be a mercenary company, I'm sure. Yeah, Bernard, they're, they're hiring mercenaries, because apparently their gigantic army of giants is, uh, in their opinion, not enough. But this is, this is a very good sign. Because if nothing else, it means that their armies are kind of spread out. And that means that I should be able to take them. I could beat their army if it's split up into three little pieces. As opposed to being one giant army. And of course their god is dead. Though for how long, we do not know. Scalaria, Scalaria is trying again to attack us here. And I believe like previous times, they are going to fail. They do have some whites this time around. And they are tough customers. Especially when one of them is ethereal. But we'll see. Ghouls. Schools are no match for the flame of the alchemists. Assuming the alchemists are able to hit. They're kind of drunk right now, it looks like. Or the fumes, you know. The fumes of the alchemy is getting to them. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if this is something that the developers can fix, but it's weird that the spells go so much slower than the units in the battle screen. And I don't want to speed up the battle, because then I'll miss the... The units will go too fast to watch, but at the same time... The spells just are slow. Look at that gracefully arcing alchemist fire. Oh, hit something, please. 
Well, one of the whites is having a bad day. And whites definitely, um, they can route. They don't have super morale like true undead. Alright, we'll go a little faster. One white down. I would very much like to win this battle. Losing this block province ahead of my movement against Ashdod would be certainly something that I would like to avoid. Although, to be honest, I do not see me losing this battle. Unless some kind of crazy morale thing happens. And it won't. They are routing. Did we take too much of a hit, though? Well, we lost five Battle Vestals. That's... Those are manageable losses. Let's see what's going on in the arena. Ashdod is fighting Ermor. I wish Ermor would declare war on Ashdod for reals. Alright, we have this dude. First son of Anak. We know him already. He's been causing us trouble for a while. He has fear. He's a hero. Legendary cruelty. Okay, that gives him fear. That's kind of interesting. And he has an increased... Oh, it doesn't give him fear. What am I saying? That's the no-no. Oh, yeah, everyone fears him. I guess it does. But he has an increased chance of dealing permanent afflictions. Yeah, nice guy. But he is old. And we know what happens to old people in Dominions. They die. But not in this battle against... Uh, that guy. Who is <laughs> no longer... No longer with us. Ulm. What's your deal? Oh. Oh, you're going to waste Hildegard? This is one of the great heroes of Ulm. And she's awesome. She branches you out a little bit into nature magic. And she's just really cool. Really has a really great story, which you can pause and read. And I... That's a shame that they're wasting her against this jerk. Oh, look, bugs. We'll be seeing more of those later. And if they're beating this guy. They're taking this sucker out. Look at this. I love it. This makes me so happy. Come on, come on. Oh, good. More bugs. Excellent. 13 hit points. I mean, he's holding out. Does he have regeneration? Doesn't look like it. I think it's just poison damage, maybe? And Hildegard is victorious. Maybe. Okay, she survived the... Alright, you! So we don't have to worry about that guy anymore. Thanks, uh, Ulm. You're proving to be quite good friends of us. Alright, now it is Hildegard versus Dona. Dona. And of course I'm rooting for Hildegard. She is, she is the champion whom I will support in this arena. Although, apparently, this fellow is not quite as susceptible to bugs as the leader of Ashdod, which is very strange. And now the bugs are attacking her? What? Did he control the bugs? Are those his bugs? Alas, things look looks, looks very bad for poor Hildegard. She does not have giant level hit points. No, no, she's down to, down to 10. And she is poisoned. And now she is down to four. Uh, she's not going to make it. Unfortunately, this is the end of her. Yep. She could have taken him too, unfortunately. So now it is Marignan versus Oceania. And Marignan sends Foen, the horse tribe chief. Well, maybe. Depends on how accurate phone is, I suppose. Not accurate enough. Nope. Oceania wins the arena death match. Alright, well. Looks like we're holding Scalaria off. Ashdod wants to party, and I think we could take him at this point. I think. I mean, I want more troops still, but I think that uh, this army at least is vulnerable. Maybe we can attack them and hold here to wait for reinforcements. We found a murdering mire, which is a sounds like a very lovely place. And Banshee, Banshee, you are still alive, buddy. Looks like Ashdod is like, eh, we're not going to uh, mess with him for right now. There's some Bashanites here, a Zanzamite. 
Um, here's a joke for you guys. What luggage do you think Ashdod uses? Probably Sansamite. <laughs> or Sansanite. Sorry. Ugh, messed up my own joke. But before I end the episode, and this will be an extra short episode so that I can spend many, many minutes, potentially hours, deploying my troops and planning out the attack, I do want to show you that I've been building some magical items. Fire plates for my leaders, they're slightly better than their current plate and it gives them morale. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't want them to have morale. But <laughs> I did build a champion's helmet or helmet of heroes, which gives inspiration, which I definitely do want, keeps my troops happy. These will give reinvigoration to certain mages, and this will give air shield and luck to a mage as well. Since we need some penetration for some spells, I created this to do penetration. Basically, I've been spending all the gems that I possibly can, except for air and nature. Because nature I'm going to give out to my lizards to swarm the enemy with bugs, and air is going to now allow Mr. Burnsaber here to summon an archangel. Well, no, to summon a harbinger which you will see next turn. So, frankly, there's not a lot for me to do right now in this episode because, I, again, I want to do all the rest of this stuff later. But one thing I definitely do want to do is I would like to get some troops out here, crazy man. I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to... I'm not going to move these troops to the Ashdod front. The troops from the south are, are going to have to be enough because we need to hold this against Scalaria. This is their main method of entering into my lands. It looks like Oceania and Ermor are fighting underwater. Hopefully Oceania will have what it takes to beat them since they are an underwater race. Another lizard never hurts. We do, however, have a slave. Where are you, slave? He's going to... Oh, really? They can move all the way in one move, huh? That's good that I know that now. Xerxes, I know that you want to be part of this grand battle to come, but we need someone to help guard this, so unfortunately I'm going to have you stay there for the time being. Menelaus and Kyalarios aren't doing anything. They're just kind of sitting around, so they all can come to the capital and participate in the battle. They could be communion slaves, perhaps. That would be useful. Theodric and Hunric. Well, you guys can actually stay. I don't. You're more valuable against the undead than you are against Ashdod. Preaching is not going to do us any good. Okay. Well, you can hang out with the army and patrol, I guess. No reason why not. You are blessing. You can bless my my vestals. All right. So I went ahead and just, I didn't feel like I had time to move, move a guy down here, so I did recruit a Centurion, just a no-name Centurion who's going to be delivering 54 units up to the front. I don't want to leave this undefended though, so we're going to create more. Oh my goodness, we are, somehow, for some reason we are out of gold. Hmm. I'm not sure why. Oh, right. All these Varangians. And I'm, I'm getting mixed reports here. Some some of you are saying, go with the Spear Guys. They are the bomb. But then there's Chris Lighthawk, who's like, yeah, Spear Guy is not that good. Stick with Varangians. The Varangians are a known quantity. The purpose of the Spear Guys would be really just to stand in the middle and hold the Giants at bay. Hopefully my cheap guys and my bugs can do that, especially with the morale boost. Uh, we're talking a difference of 8 protection, is it? Oh, God, no. <laughs> a difference of 11 protection? Um, the Ergs are important. Oh, my. But this... They, they just... Man, they eat up resources like no one's business, let me tell you. Does anything cost gold but not resources? So, 89... 20 resources, so I can get 4 of them. 29, so I can get 3 of them. My goodness. Y'all are expensive. Vessels are cheap. Okay, well that's a good way to get some units without spending too much in the way of resources, okay. Which gives me a little bit of gold just to buy something here. 
to hold off. Or to make Ulm at least look like we're sort of respectable. And we have these guys down here at the throne. Alright, so this is this is what basically we're going to have. Next turn we're going to have an angel on top of this and my communion slaves. But they're not going to make it in time to join the first battle. Which is going to take place next turn here. And then I will hold there and then move everybody else up. And then we'll continue the path. I Hopefully we'll be able to go up here. Hopefully Banshee and team will stay alive. So we'll just go up here and move forward and we can get Banshee back someplace safe. And we can retake Ivermark. That's the main goal. Right now I'm just focusing on Ashdod. That's all I care about right now. We're going to beat these guys back. If, if that means that Ermor and Ulm attack us from the back and kill us all. You know what, man? Such is life. That's just that's just what happens sometimes. You know, and, and you just got to deal. You just got to deal with it. I'm actually going to see if I can get Kalator down here to sneak through past Ermor. And see what's going on with Ashdod's southern boundaries. I want to see... Oh my goodness. So it does look as if Ulm... I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but it does look like as if they're heading for Scalaria and leaving me alone. Which is excellent. Black Plate Infantries, Ogres... I mean, this is a tough army. We could beat this with good magic. With, like, Burn Saber casting Thunderstrike, we could nail these guys pretty hard, but I'm glad that we don't have to. Still winter. I might not be able to get my gnome, Gnomes. Oh, jeez. I might not be able to get my gnomes to the capital in time to participate in the battle, it looks like. I already have two there, thankfully, but these two, I mean, the pass will probably not clear until spring. So that means not next turn, but the following turn. So there, that's what we have. What kind of, oops, what kind of, Marcus, come on. What kind of Theurg did we get? Tokshin, of course, is a air theurg, very similar to Burn Saber. And Giatros, we seem to be heavy on the air, which is an Antiphonos, unfortunately, is air as well. Air is like the one we don't want, honestly. It's helpful in some situations, but against what we're fighting and Chrysothem, both of my theurgs are air. This is retarded. As you can see here, they only have a 1 in 3 chance of getting air, but yet. Fire wouldn't be that helpful for me either. Water is what I really want. Because they can do quickness and numbness and a lot of good stuff. Plus, I, I guess I'm wrong. I thought an Ice Pebble Staff was a Construction 4 item. But it is not, apparently, because none of my guys can forge it. So, and Photios, unfortunately, cannot forge Horror Helms either. And I know for a fact they are a level 4 item. So I think he just needs another level of Death Magic. So as soon as I can get Death up to that level, assuming I ever can... Obviously, Ashdod is my first priority, but I would like him to be able to forge a Horror Helm to help my commanders out. So, thank you very much for watching. I apologize for the little the little diatribe at the beginning, but I, I want to be clear as to what my goal is here, who I am. I don't want people to think that they're watching this in order to learn how to play Dominions better. Yeah, if you're brand new to the game, you can learn a lot from me on the techniques and how to play and what units do and how to look at the statistics but as far as master strategy I'm probably not your guy honestly and uh, you can probably get more from the forums so but I, I want to be fun and I want to be entertaining and I want to create stories based around you or that is those of you whose names are, are being used on my commanders and, and so we could all tell a tale together about our adventures in the land of Parganos fighting for Emperor Burnsaber and I just recalled that we don't have a god where, where the where the heck is our shroud bearing statue it is uh the third year is it not yeah it's, it's it's almost year four and we don't have a god so that's interesting i would very much it would certainly bolster the morale of our troops if uh Dikeosune would show up <laughs> and just be like hey guys here i am uh, that would be that would be really helpful. I think I think that would that would certainly go a long way to make these guys happy. Also, I can I I assume that because this episode has been kind of talky, that anyone who is still listening right now is someone who follows me, generally likes what I'm doing, and is interested in my channel. So I'm going to say this now. I figure what better time than in the, in the end of a a video in the middle of a series after a lot of talking, which most people have turned out. I'm developing a small bit of nostalgia and I'm thinking 
just thinking, okay, I just want to float this by you and see what you all think. I'm thinking of expanding a little bit into a once in a while, like definitely not every day, it's not going to compete with my Dominions and, and turn-based strategy stuff, but RPG. And I've been desiring for a long time now to play the enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate 2. I actually got motivated by watching Kikoskia, who's a great LPR who does a lot of old games. He's playing Baldur's Gate 1, the enhanced edition, and I'm just loving it. Now, I don't know if I'm able to carry that sort of game with my LP style, and it's certainly a long-ass game, and it'll probably take me like a year or more to do at the rate I'm going to be doing it, which is like one episode a week or whatever. But I figure it's broken up into chapters, and so it's something I can like just start small, you know, maybe do a chapter, see how it goes. If it goes well, we can do another chapter, and uh, it would give me an opportunity to relive the nostalgia of when I played that game many, many, many years ago. And uh, there might be some new characters and stuff in there too. So I just want those of you who, again, are hearing this, which I hope will be just the people that, that give a shit, you know, that care about this channel and enjoy it, I'd like to know what you think about that idea. If you think it's a crazy, ridiculous idea and you don't like it at all, or if you think it's a great idea and you want me to give it a try. Nothing's been decided yet, of course. Uh, if anything, I'm, I'm more hesitant than I am gung-ho. So right now I'm thinking maybe... 70-30, 70 meaning no, 30 meaning yes. But if I get some interest from you out there, that would certainly go a long way toward easing my concerns. So please let me know what you think. I'm, as always, very eager to hear what your thoughts are on that particular topic. So thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned, uh, uploads may be a little sporadic between now and next week, so please do not fret. I'm not that you would. I mean, there's thousands of people out there that are doing LPs that are very exciting that you can watch instead. Might I make a recommendation? Tokshin is doing amazingly well with his Agartha campaign right now. He is. Uh, he thought it lo he looked like me basically. He looked like a goner about six episodes ago, and he is slowly but surely clawing his way back. And it has been so much fun to watch. So I definitely think that uh, you should give him a look if you have the extra time because I, I think he's great. And all right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and have a great one, everyone.